To help us through today's events, we are joined by the CEO, Ben Fransen. Today's event, we will look a little bit deeper into the economics and, and the potential behind the, the expressions uh, COVID-19 uh, candidate. Uh, we have been in other events through a lot of the advantages uh, and such on the data, so feel free to look at, at some earlier videos. We will, we will focus on the economics today. There will be a relatively short presentation because we also want to leave ample room for, for question and answer, maybe especially in the light that there has been a lot of uh, lot of news flows from the sector, you know, it has been focused since Merck came up with their antiviral uh, uh, treatment option, uh, oral, uh, but also yesterday where we saw NHI coming out with data suggesting that a booster version, putting a different vaccine candidate uh, as a booster actually increases the efficiency. So, so a lot of news uh, flow. So we would like to, to leave room for, for Q&A. As always, down in your right-hand box, feel free to ask questions. Also, during the presentation, uh, we will run the presentation and, and, and pick up the, the questions later. But no worry, I will try and pick up as many questions. The presentation will be in English. Do feel free to, to ask questions in, in Danish. Uh, I will try and translate it to my best ability, so so the answer will be in English. But Ben, with the, that introduction a little bit long, uh, I will leave uh, it you to take us through the presentation. Thank you very much, Michael, and thank you to HC Anderson Capital for allowing me to to give a brief uh, presentation revolving the economics, revolving the COVID nineteen vaccine candidate that we have in Expressions Pipeline. First, the usual uh, disclaimer about forward-looking statements. Before I move into the details, I think it's worth uh, highlighting the development in the share price of many different players in the field of COVID-19 here over the last one and a half year, or almost two years now. And basically, this table shows uh, some of the well-known players like Moderna and, and uh, BioNTech, uh, who are also stock exchange listed and Expression Biotech, uh, as well as Bavaria Nordic, and some of the big pharma companies who have been involved in uh, COVID-19. And I'm very proud that uh, Expression Biotech now is in this course since the beginning of 2020, and when we actually initiated a COVID-19 vaccine that we announced in, a, in February 2020, that we have actually uh, given our shareholders a substantial market value. And you can see it's it's increased over 10 times over the time period. If you compare between the end of 19, uh, 2019 and the end of the third quarter, the 30th of September here very recently. So we are in a, in a good league when it comes to development of our market value. and. I should say, obviously, it's very much related to the COVID-19 vaccine development, uh, which is a key pipeline candidate. So that particular candidate from Expression is uh, outlicensed to Bavarian Nordic. I want to spend some time on this slide, which I've presented before, but it provides you the overview of what's actually the, the setup in the licensing revolving the COVID-19 candidate. Because Expression Biotechnologies, we have a joint venture called Adaptback, which is 34% owned by Expression Biotechnologies. The remaining 66% uh, resides with a uh, spin out from Copenhagen University, where the technology behind the virus like particle technology, which is a key component in the COVID 19 vaccine, is coming from. Now, our joint venture uh, at DAPMAC, they got the rights to outlicense the COVID-19 vaccine in 2020. You know, we had some amazing preclinical data already uh, uh, announced in the summer of 2020. And Bavarian Nordic, they uh, found this particularly attractive and could see the potential of this vaccine uh, in the long run. We knew during the summer of 2020 that there were other modalities like uh, messenger RNA technologies uh, developing uh, novel COVID-19 vaccines. But we said all along we would not be the first, but we would be the best. And we can see actually what we have shown in preclinical and clinical 
uh, uh, data that that we are among the very top when it comes to efficacy and potential long-term effect as as well as safety. Anyway, on the uh, Adaptac Bavarian license, Adaptac is got a four million uh, euro upfront paid in July of 2020. In addition to that, Adaptac is eligible to receive 136 million in development and sales milestones uh, through the development and an early uh, commercial uh, phase of, of, the, of the project. In addition to that, Adapac is eligible to receive single to double digit royalties of Bavarian's revenues. That's one part of the equation. Uh, the 34% ownership of Adapac is on that side, so to speak. In addition to this, there is uh, not only the VLP technology in the COVID-19 uh, vaccine candidate from us, but also Expression's own Drosophila S2 insect cell-based technology. That's a, the protein production system that's being used to make the antigens that couple to the VLP. So in this respect, Expression and Adapac made a license uh, agreement that allows for Adapac to make the license agreement with Bavarian Nordic using Expression's technology. So in this license, uh, Expression uh, can receive up to 2 million euro in commercial milestone payments, and importantly, a lower double digit percentage of Adapac's royalties. So, so that's the overall setup on the licensing uh, in, in this triangular manner. So as an example, uh, it's been uh, uh, announced or, or analyzed by uh, analyse guidance from Aksjesparne that uh, as an example of an estimate, let's say that uh, uh, at that back, they can receive 10% of uh, Bavarian's revenues and let's assume that uh, Expression can receive 10% uh, of Adapac's uh, royalties. That would, in essence, mean that Expression would receive 1% of Bavarian's revenues. Right. So there are financial analysts who've been looking into this in details. I just mentioned Analyse Guiden. Analyse Guiden uh, from Aksjesbarn in Sweden as well as Pareto Securities, which is also a, a well-known analytical uh, house, uh, are making uh, analytical reports suggesting uh, value of the COVID-19 project and the 34% ownership of Adapa in the range uh, 1 to 1.3 billion uh, Swedish kroner. They calculate that this is around 60 to 65% of expressions value, actually. Now, Expression is still a small mid-cap uh, stock exchange listed company, so we have been sponsoring these uh, uh, reports from Analyse Guide and Pareto. That's no secret, although, of course, uh, they listen to what we say and do their own opinionated analysis. On the other hand, then uh, Bavarian Nordic, uh, who now has the exclusive license to the COVID-19, they're covered by independent big uh, financial institutions like Nordea, Danske Bank, and Kaneki. And what is interesting in, is, is in August, when uh, in the beginning of August, Expression announced the, the headline results from the first clinical phase one slash two A trials that we had been sponsoring ourselves and with contribution from a e EU grant. Uh, and later in August, Bavarian Nordic actually announced that they would initiate, or they were initiating in August, the clinical phase two trial, as well as uh, getting funding from the Danish state to uh, support the phase three trial. So really important uh, milestones, and that triggered updates on the analysis of Bavarian Nordic uh, by Nordea, Danske Bank, and Kineki. The point here is, if you look at those analytical reports and you extract the parameters which revolve the COVID-19 project, then you can actually calculate from expressions point of view, uh, a value of the COVID-19 vaccine candidate and the 34% ownership of a debt back of between two and 2.6 billion uh, Swedish Krona, considerably more. Um, so, 
lots of the factors involved, involving this relate to uh, the big financial institutions uh, uh, predicting uh, 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 estimates of prices and likelihood of approvals uh, quite favorable and uh, and I think it's worth mentioning them here because uh, I think we are having uh, we have taken uh, quite a lot of risk of this project it is in phase two it has funding for phase three and so um, I think it's 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 good to see these independent big financial institutions actually projecting a value which is significant. So that's my take on on this, uh, and I hope you can relate it to it as well as uh, shareholders. And uh, let's see where we can take it from here. That said, I'm uh, happy to uh, take any questions as Michael mentioned in the beginning. And you need to unmute, Michael. Michael? That is good. Thank you, Bent. And uh, I think one, one, one thing I need to understand, uh, and of course, you have taken the estimates of, of some uh, big banks who has uh, done the Bavarian and, and put that, that in their Bavarian. Uh, analysis is that a probability weighted uh, or is it the the the, the big uh, sales picture that that's of course is my first question because we are only in phase two so so i think that would be nice to to get that clarified indeed that is, that is very much on like success so it is probably michael i think that's sound here. I hear, sorry what i hear an echo you hear an echo. OK, I'll try to uh, respond here. Uh, that's better. So likelihood of success, of success is uh, an important parameter in this. So the net present value calculations that all these analysts, they do, they weigh in the likelihoods of success. And what we can see when we look across the these uh, different financial institutions and the, the estimates, uh, it, it, it varies, so it's between 30 and 50% uh, likelihood of, of success, which is still uh, higher than uh, what, what it used to be while it was being uh, tested in the, in the first clinical trial. So that's good. There's also a, a question here. Uh, do you have uh, built up, I know you are a little bit uh, a part of just a, a joint venture now, but do you have any market expectations? Uh, do you work with some internal market expectation of this booster market? I, I know I've seen a lot of swings by, by analysts from 2 billion uh, US dollars, which I really think it seems low, up to 30 billion US dollars. So are you working internally? I, I know you here used external uh, reports, but are you working with some number internally on, on the market size? That's a good question. Um, we have, <clears throat> for a long time, to be honest, not dared to calculate with the upside of this uh, important project. And in many ways, we made a cash raise issue uh, one year ago, and also through the recent uh, warrant program exercises that that direct the proceeds towards our her two breast cancer vaccine candidate and so the covid 19 vaccine candidate is is still basically a huge upside we uh, follow of course uh, the commercial expectations um, but in a sense uh, it has been out licensed to bavaria nordic uh, the fact that they have communicated a very clear booster strategy is something that that we uh, of course from our point of view uh, seems like a very very uh, sound uh, strategy <clears throat> there's a question here when will you see data from the phase one uh, dash 2a uh, 50 70 micro dosage uh, studies <clears throat> Also, a very good question. Uh, they are being analyzed as as we speak here yeah, in the fourth quarter, and I hope that we can uh, release news on, on this also as soon as possible. It's actually not a trivial matter to to uh, investigate the level of neutralizing antibodies, and that's why we we communicated the first data that we have on the 25 microgram uh, dose, and so so we're working eagerly on that. 
and I'm looking very much forward to seeing those. I'm sure they will support the overall uh, outcome that we see now that there is a, a potential long-term effect of this vaccine, which is outstanding. Will it be more headline data or will we get a deeper insight into those data? I know you, I'm not sure whether you can answer that, but, but it's always nice to have the, the, something to dig into as, uh, in this market. As soon as, as, as we have an overview of those data, we will also be uh, releasing them. And of course, in, uh, in coordination with Bavaria and Nordic. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our scientific colleagues, both within the Prevent NCOV Consortium and Expression and ADAPTBAC and Copenhagen University and, and other academic uh, stakeholders are, of course, also working on, on, uh, on scientific uh, publications that we can do later in 2022. And there's a question here, is the new cohort of 100 microgram COVID-19 maybe naive, naive phase two participant a sign that you're still looking at a one dose cover all vaccines? Do you still expect it to have this uh, strength? Uh, that's that's very much a very Nordic's uh, take on, on, on this, which is uh, fine. I think they have sponsored quite uh, a good level of, of monkey uh, studies and and have seen that that uh, chosen dose level is is a uh, is a sound level. And bear in mind that uh, we have in the first clinical trial been looking at both including and excluding adjuvants, and we see actually that this vaccine actually does not need an adjuvant uh, as such, which is actually also a key parameter in in the in the product profile of this vaccine. And and that's why also Bavaria Nordic uh, uh, on that 100 microgram level without any event. And is there any co cooperation going on with the Danish uh, company Bioporto, who has, uh, you know, uh, are doing uh, tests? Uh, I think it's a general question uh, to, to, to kill curiosity. <clears throat> we know them quite well. Uh, and in the course of, of, the, of our development of, uh, of, of the antigen, we, we've also been in, in discussions with Bioporto. And I can't disclose any, any more than that. And of course, yeah, maybe it's a little bit out of your hands, but, but, but I'll, I will try and ask it anyway. Uh, there's an asking about delay, I'm not sure. Uh, being, re being ready to have a COVID uh, vaccine in, in early 22, I, I'm not sure I have ever heard that uh, <laughs> that timeline being expressed. Uh, can we make the, uh, and maybe now in 22, what are your expectations on, on the timeline? I, I, mean, I think we hear a lot of timelines, you know, if you should come with your, your mm -hmm. guests, I, I know it's a little bit out of your hands. Yes, but maybe that that particular timeline really uh, falls back on the Danish uh, Minister of Health because I think he he said something like that. But but uh, Bavaria Nordic actually say uh, that it will be uh, available uh, 2022 slash 2023, uh, and I've heard Paul Chaplin say that it will be ready in the beginning of 2023. So. So uh, that's just the timeline I believe should be uh, should be mentioned here, and that's also the the timelines I guess that that these financial institutions have been uh, uh, used as assumptions. Assumptions in those reports. That's the early twenty three. Yes. Yes. Do you? There's a question here. Do you expect the uh, fifty seventy to give a stronger response? You know, than the data you already released. You know, twelve times uh, stronger than. Uh, than, than the current product on the, on the market. Is that your expectations? Uh, I, that's a good question. I would really like to see those data before I, I comment on it. <clears throat> but it's it's uh, what we've seen so far supports that, that uh, even in higher dose can also <clears throat> generate higher levels of neutralizing antibodies. But it wouldn't change the, the scope of the potential of this vaccine. That's my belief. And here, Michael fell off. <laughs> Person. Um, I guess you already answered the, the question about the 57 million. Perfect. 
At what year can breast? Uh, at what year can the breast cancer? Now we're moving a little bit uh, out to one of your other very interesting areas, but not the less uh, very important for your share. Uh, uh, when when do we expect those uh, to be ready in phase one, two, and three? Uh, does it go as predicted and expected? Uh, so maybe a little bit on the timeline for when we can expect the next news flow on the on the on the breast cancer project. Sure, I'm uh, happy that. <clears throat> the breast cancer vaccine uh, candidate is all being touched, also being touched on in, in this meeting because it's it's actually the, the project we we spend most time on now and, and very important in our ongoing development of our pipeline. <clears throat> and we are in a preclinical stage right now. Uh, we are working closely together with the University of Bologna and getting the proof of concept in animal. Uh, studies running so or, or uh, getting them uh, onwards so we can see data from this in the beginning of, of uh, 2022 and and in 2022 we'll continue with our uh, manufacturing uh, scale up and GMP uh, batch uh, preparations and do uh, toxicology uh, studies and all in all uh, prepare for uh, applying the first clinical trial application here before the end of 2022. So in 2023, we can move into a first clinical phase one trial, and more likely at least a uh, clinical phase one slash two A trial, because there will also be some surrogate uh, efficacy parameters that we can measure on. So it's it's more than a, than a safety trial that we uh, plan with. Uh, going onwards, um, I hesitate actually to, to put years on the, our phase two and phase three projections at, at this point in, in time. I think uh, the most relevant is to, to move into a clinical uh, trial and get some human data. And, uh, and then we'll see uh, most likely uh, uh, we, we can do that in a year's time and then carry on with the phase two preparations uh, beyond that. Um, but that's, that's further out in the future, basically. And 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 the, uh, we are now going through your pipeline, so so let's do that. Uh, uh, the same question uh, regarding to malaria: when 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 do we expect some uh, some uh, some data coming out or, or movement of of, of of this pipeline? I know it's a little bit of a less uh, potential economic uh, for you, but but I, I guess it's still. Uh, a it's, big part of your uh, your still, uh, basic technology. It's still very important for our basic technology. That's absolutely right. So, so our express uh, protein production technology has been validated in the first clinical trials within malaria. Uh, two different projects that are in clinical phase one slash two and clinical phase one phases, respectively, with with the uh, University of Oxford and University of Copenhagen, respectively. And the, the collaboration with the University of Oxford at the moment is, is uh, particularly progressing uh, also in light of, of that the University of Oxford have, uh, has obviously also been affected by COVID-19 and, and their own efforts in that field. But our main collaborator at the University of Oxford, uh, uh, Professor Simon Draper, actually uh, released a, a scientific publication in the beginning of this year of the first uh, clinical phase one trial, which was a safety trial taking place in healthy volunteers in in, in London, actually, uh, yes. And uh, the, the, we have also announced here that in 2021, a second clinical trial uh, with that malaria project is uh, initiated. And that will take actually some time. So we don't expect headline results from that first or, or this uh, second clinical uh, trial before 2023. Um, so that that takes a bit more time. It's taking place in Africa uh, with up, up to 60 uh, 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 test persons, both adults and uh, children. And and uh, yeah, we're looking, of course, very much to, to see the progression on, on this. And then there's a question about. I guess we're going back to 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 the COVID nineteen vaccine. Do you expect to uh, or Bavarian or, or your collaboration is to expect to receive emergency use uh, authorization? You know, getting uh, faster to market. And, and and the question I think might come because if I hear correct, uh, FDA is uh, kind of uh, a little bit removing the the 
the possibilities for for emergency use for 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 some uh, kind of uh, for some indications. Uh, I at least heard the, some news uh, coming out of other Swedish biotechnology companies yesterday. So I, I don't know whether you are that much into the to the nitty gritty stuff of 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 of, of this. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I follow, of course, WHO and, and, and their position uh, on the COVID-19, which is still a pandemic, and I believe still a pandemic in the also in the in the near future here. Uh, so emergency use may be applicable for Nordic. Um, I'm not a regulatory expert, so 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 I can only. Uh, Give my opinion on this. Um, I still think in many parts of the world that uh, emergency use uh, authorization is still very much uh, important, and I, I still believe that Bavaria Nordic is in a position actually to be in discussions across all regions in the globe, uh, not only in, in North America and Europe, but across the globe, and you know. Our COVID-19 vaccine has also a great stability, so it can be handled at room temperature, even uh, as opposed to the messenger RNA, which has to be stored and handled at minus uh, 70 or minus 80 degrees Celsius. So, so in that respect, I still think it's very important. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it was my problem. I only focused on the FDA and the US market. I guess you have a big advantage going a little bit to to not so developed market and, and develop. Uh, so that was my bad, of course, that uh, I didn't think of emergency use <laughs> other places than US. Uh, it's um, an old farm as We always think about the US market as, <laughs> as the only <laughs> god given thing. There's a, a little bit about your financial financial situation. You you you, you made uh, this uh, capital raise, uh, said you were financed uh, with the breast cancer product uh, and, and got an additional 40 million. What will this money be used for? Uh, I, I thought I you know understood that, that this is actually uh, the money you got in will will, will get, get you a good way with the breast cancer studies, but uh, not to the goal. So maybe that's a part of the the answer that. Uh, there's not so much additional money to be used. <laughs> uh, it's, yes, it's a little bit what I referred to earlier that uh, we have all in all with the rights issue in uh, October 2020 and these two uh, warrant programs raised 211 uh, million Swedish kroner out of a potential maximum 213 million Swedish kroner. So, so we are of course uh, very happy with that that the shareholders uh, allowing us to, to proceed as planned. And as I mentioned, the majority of the proceeds are going into the HER2 uh, breast cancer uh, project and definitely into uh, 2023. So, so we're in a good position to, to progress on our plans. And then there's again, uh, with, with emergency use, there's a, there's a question here. Uh, could it be that, 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 that the vaccines would be ready in 22? Uh, that, that's a question, uh, if, if it got to the emergency use uh, pathway. <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, personally, I, I would say yes, but I would like to hear it also from Pavarian Nordi. <laughs> I, I think we're close to that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when do you expect to see the first contracts for 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 your for your COVID uh, vaccine ca candidate? Uh, we have seen other contracts, you know, out there, you know, starting to sign already uh, in the phase two. Maybe that was when when the world didn't have uh, a lot of uh, vaccines. But could there be that, that that someone will actually contract already to be sure that they are locked in on 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 some of those uh, vaccines? What are your expectations there? Well, that's that's part of the that's part of the name of the game, so to speak, uh, in terms of of uh, getting a COVID nineteen vaccine vaccine to uh, to the population uh, and the discussions on governmental levels. Um, definitely, again, I, I would refer to to Bavaria Nordic actually on on the specific uh, details on on this. And then uh, I think we are running out of time. Uh, I will ask the last questions. Uh, I will see if you will give me an answer, but it's a very good one. If you look at uh, your pipeline in e e expression uh, biotechnology, how, how large can your revenue be if you succeed? And, and now you 
to be careful, but uh, if you want to uh, if you want to make a blue sky, I guess taking in the breast cancer, taking in your candidates, maybe express is there some of these ones uh, who might be a, a blockbuster, you know, uh, potentially. Is there the potential to be a, a blockbuster candidate by one of yours? I think that will always be the first stepping stones that the company believe in that. Well, actually, I, I believe our two lead uh, pipeline projects within COVID-19 and, and breast cancer have blockbuster potential. Um, so, so I'm quite confident the COVID-19 vaccine can reach the market and and uh, deliver quite a lot of, of uh, income uh, to Bavaria Nordic, uh, Adaptback, and and of course also to Expression Biotechnologies. And even with the with the high demand here for this in uh, in, a, in in quite a higher level, uh, so potentially in the three-digit uh, Swedish million krona level, um, so that's not a that's not a bad uh, situation uh, within a within a foreseeable amount of years. <clears throat> on the breast cancer, of course, it's earlier stage, uh, but it actually. Uh, touches on uh, drawbacks that the current uh, market leaders have, the, mo the monoclonal antibodies uh, with the uh, risk of, of heart-related uh, side effects and, and, uh, and resistance and, and, uh, and cumbersome administration and expensive uh, therapies. All those drawbacks our vaccine approach uh, can address. And I, I certainly believe this multi-billion, more than 10 billion uh, dollar market is also uh, a place where the expressions breast cancer vaccine candidate definitely can can position and take market shares. So if I can just uh, get you to elaborate a little bit, but the current uh, products in, in, in this has to, is, is already selling. That's always a good indication when you want to estimate something. And is there something about the resistance, which is your pathway probably to the market? How, how, how big is that a, a problem? I, I can't remember whether you have mentioned that before. Twenty percent or thirty percent of of the current uh, current, current market uh, experience problems with the resistance, which is your take on uh, you might do better. Correct. Yeah, and 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 we have estimates of thirty percent uh, of uh, diagnosed breast cancer patients who actually don't respond well to the monoclonal antibody therapies and. and, and chemotherapy out there so we definitely believe we have a position to to take there absolutely so there is a, you know from the market size at least uh, there is a potential blockbuster supported by the, the market size and, and and other factors indeed indeed perfect uh, ben I, I will say thank you and thank you to uh, to the to the spectators or listeners for for a lot of uh, good question taking us around uh, yeah your whole pipeline even if we focused on covid 19 that's always great so thank you both to the to the listeners and spectator and, and thank you to you and, and have a nice day. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everybody. Bye bye.